to the Zoo's Home Safari. I'm Sarah. Colleen is over there joining me today. And you guys have are in for a special treat for Nick today. We are going to talk all about armadillos. And the guy you're looking at right now is the man, the myth, the legend, Dilbert. Woo! Woo! Dilbert. Dilbert is a six-banded armadillo and his cousins are native to South America. And Dilbert is built for digging. And he's basically a mini tank. He can plow through nearly anything. If you see on the cameras, he's kind of going by snuffling up some mealworms right now. He's an insectivore. And the way he gets to those insects in the wild is he uses his big front claws and he'll dig big burrows to sleep in or he'll dig through an ant mound or a, uh, a it's out of my head. A termite mound. <laughs> a termite mound. And he'll use that long, long, sticky tongue to slurp up as many bugs as he can. So today, we're going to have kind of an armadillo extravaganza. We have three species of armadillos here at our zoo. There are 20 worldwide. And we're gonna show you three species here, and we're just gonna let them all run around and interact and play together, which we have done before. All right guys, so Sarah just mentioned that we're gonna meet three different species of armadillo. And this armadillo here is a little girl named Paulina. And Paulina is really special to us here at the zoo because she was born here not too long ago. So she's not very old. She was actually born in my department. So I got to help raise her from a tiny little baby. And when these guys are born, they're about the size of a little ping pong ball or golf ball. And they kind of look like a little golf ball. And they actually just look like a miniature version of the adult. Now, Paulina is a southern three-banded armadillo. And why these guys are so amazing, and actually one of my favorite species of armadillo, is because you'll notice that Paulina is rolled perfectly into a ball. I mean, look at the way that her tail and her head are wedged together to form that perfect sphere. And why this is so important for these armadillos is because it helps them protect themselves from predators. So when these armadillos feel threatened by say a jaguar or other big cat, they'll curl up into a ball and they'll just stay nice and snug until the danger has passed. And they have these little whiskery kind of hairs all over their body that help let them know when the danger is gone because they act kind of like whiskers on a cat so they help them feel if anything is nearby. I'm gonna go ahead and put Paulina down and you guys will be able to see her walk around. When she comes out of that ball, I think it is just the coolest thing. They look like almost like a little beetle running around or a little car, like a little Volkswagen running around. <laughs> We always like to joke, they look like little wind-up toys, too, sometimes. They do. Or ballerinas running on their toes. Oh, yeah. Then she wants to know if they have good eyesight. Do they have good eyesight? So armadillos are mostly nocturnal, meaning they are awake at night. Well, at night, we know that it's not very light out, so it's not really necessary to have great eyesight. But you'll notice that if you saw Dilbert a minute ago pushing things around with his nose and sniffing around for things, that he has an excellent sense of smell. He is always trying to sniff around and find where the next treat would be. So their eyesight, not really the sense they're gonna rely on, but they have an excellent sense of smell. Right now you guys are looking at Matako. Matako is another one of our three-banded armadillos. She is one of our older ladies. She's 26. And she does education programs here at the zoo. If you've been to an education program here at the zoo, you may have met Mataka before. Kelly wants to know how hard are their shells? How hard are their shells? Sarah, do you want to answer that one? Sure. So I'm holding Snuffles. She's a screaming hairy armadillo. And their shells differ in strength, but they're pretty tough. So I'm gonna put her down so she can run around a little bit. There you go, Snuffles. So their, their shell that you're talking about is made of scoots, individual scoots. And each scoot is uh, made from keratin, which is the same thing our fingernails are made of. 
and they'll shed those scoots every once in a while and grow new ones. But they're hard enough usually that if some predator comes by, uh, it will prevent the predator from piercing through all the way, depending on where the bite is. Now the three-banded armadillo, Mataco and Pelina that you were just seeing, they can, oh there's Pelina, <laughs> that are <laughs> um, running around here, and they can fall up. Theirs are really hard plates, and they're nearly impossible to um, pierce through when they're tied up in a ball. Um, Dilber, you can see, has some soft sides sticking out here, and his bands are a little bit softer. But uh, what Dilber has going for him when there's a predator nearby is he will run really fast, and he can dig really fast so that he can escape a predator. Now, uh, the three bandits, I think Colleen talked about them balling up real tight. And then we have uh, our Screaming Harry armadillos. And it's in their name, Screaming Harry. She is She's behind it there in that corner. Right over here. She's behind her. She is hiding. There she is. Let's see, girl. Armadillo, you can see is named obviously because they have lots of hair, okay, on the sides, and then they also will scream as a form of defense. So ours don't scream usually because they are socialized from a really early age, and they're used to being held and touched by little kiddos and all kinds of folks that come and visit the zoo. But if they were out in the wild, a jaguar might come by or an ocelot, and, <laughs> and if they came by and grabbed that armadillo, grabbed a screaming hairy armadillo, picked up in its mouth, that armadillo would scream really, really loud, and it would hopefully startle the jaguar so much that they would drop the armadillo and they could scurry off and hide. So that's one of their forms of defense. Malachi asks, are they related to anteaters? Are they related to anteaters? That's one of my favorite questions so far because the answer is yes. So armadillos are in a special family of animals called the Zenarthrans, which is anteaters, armadillos, and sloths. So all of the kind of misfit animals that like to eat a lot of bugs. Um, those are called the Zenarthrans. Sophie wants to know, does their shell grow with them or do they shed the shell? That's an excellent question, Sophie. So their shell does grow with them, kind of like um, all the rest of our body that grows with us, their shell grows with them. However, when they're born, their shell isn't super hard. So while they're growing in the beginning, their shell is nice and soft and it hasn't hardened up yet, so it's easier for it to grow. Because I'm sure you can imagine if their shell was super hard, it might be hard for that to grow with them. Right on. Jenna wants to know if they can swim. Oh yeah. So they can actually swim a little bit. Um, they don't necessarily swim on top of the water like you and I do, but what they do is they will go to the bottom of a river and they'll have help themselves sink to the bottom. Then they will walk across the bottom of a river and out the other side and they can hold their breath for as long as that takes usually. Morgan wants to know why they have long claws. Why they have long claws? So if you're just joining us, um, you didn't catch the beginning. Sarah had mentioned that armadillos are built for digging, and they've got stuff all over their body that makes them excellent diggers. But the biggest thing that makes them the best digger are those long claws. So as the camera zooms in on the armadillos, you'll notice that there's one thing that all the armadillos have in common. They have really long, thick front claws, and those claws help them to dig into ant hills and pretty much any bug any bug mound where they can find something yummy and grubby to eat. Um, but also, armadillos like Delbert might not just eat bugs. They actually might eat small mammals. Um, if they could find a nest of, say, bunnies or something, they might even tear into that. So these guys don't just eat bugs because they are a little bit bigger. Which leads me to one other thing I would like to say is that you'll notice that these armadillos, you can see his claws like we were talking about, these armadillos are very, very different sizes 
than each other. So we've got Silver, and then we've got Metaco, Paulina, and Snuffles, who are all very different sizes. And Sarah mentioned that we've got about 20 different species of armadillos. The smallest armadillo is a pink fairy armadillo. Please Google that, pink fairy armadillo. That's a real thing. And they are only about three to five inches long. But then there is also a giant armadillo. And those things, I'm gonna show you, they're about this big of an armadillo. <laughs> so we go from this big to that big. So armadillo species, they really range in size. Emma asked if they can climb. Yes, Emma, they can climb. Uh, they can climb um, pretty well. They usually like will climb hills and things like that. And they'll climb out of uh, burrows that they dig and hide in. Um, they don't really climb like rock walls or anything like that. But they have amazing upper body strength so that they can pull themselves up and out of things really well, um, including Dilbert. Who right now is in his ball pit and he's searching for bugs. Sarah, why so, would we give him something like a ball pit? Oh, well, you know, Dilbert is a very busy boy and Dilbert likes challenges. So in the wild, your food is not served to you on a plate. And so we try to do the same thing at the zoo. We try not to serve food on a plate to an animal. We like to make it challenging for them. They all receive amazing, great, nutritional, complete diets, but we want them to search for their food, forage for it, hunt for it, if we can simulate that kind of a thing. And I'll show you what Dilbert's eating right now. He's eating these mealworms. Oh, don't those look magnificent? So juicy. And Dilbert loves them. He can slurp them up as fast as he can with that big, long, sticky tongue. So Sarah, watching Dilbert's behavior right now and how he's digging around for, for those bugs, can you tell me and tell all of the fans watching out there, do you think that Dilbert or any armadillo would make a good pet? Oh, you know, Dilbert is about as cute as they come, but he would not make a good pet. He requires a specialized diet that consists of more than just mealworms. And he can be really destructive if he wants to be. In fact, he's like uh, the nine bandits who are causing a lot of issues down in the Southwest and they're making their way up there even in Indiana now. So they get into people's gardens and yards and they really tear them up. And Dilbert needs a lot of activity, he needs a lot of space to dig, and they're just not the greatest animals to have as pets. It's really important that our pets remain domesticated animals and we don't contribute to the illegal pet trade. Alrighty, so next we have a question from Haley, and Haley was asking what country are armadillos from, and Haley, that's an excellent question because armadillos are from a lot of countries. It's actually probably easier to talk about which continents you might find armadillos because they're found all over. Since there are 20 species, we're going to find them in North America, Central America, and South America. So they're pretty much all over this hemisphere of the world. Quinn wants to know how long they live. That's a good question, Quinn. You know, armadillo species can live different uh, lengths of time. And for instance, our little three-banded armadillos we have here, they can live well into their late 20s and early 30s. That's a pretty long-lived animal for that size. And uh, some of the larger armadillos can live into their late teens and early 20s like the taco. Now, Hazel wants to know how many babies do they have? So this is a super fun one. How that many babies do armadillos have? Well, again, since there are about 20 species of armadillo, each armadillo species kind of has a different number of babies. So when we're talking about um, the southern three-banded armadillos, like Metaco and Paulina, those guys just have one baby, and that baby sleeps under them when they're curled up into a ball, and it sleeps snuggled right up under their belly. And then Sarah might want to tell you about Snuffles here. If Snuffles were to have babies, Sarah, how many babies would Snuffles have? So on average, Screaming Harry Armadillo, 
armadillos have um, one to three babies. They usually have twins though. And then the twins end up usually being different sexes. So one is a boy and one is a girl. And then did you, I'm sorry, I missed it. Did you say anything about the nine bandits? I did not. Take oh it away. my gosh. The nine bandits are some of the most interesting. The nine banded armadillos that are live in the Southwest, uh, they can have, they usually will have quadruplets. And quadruplets is four, for those of you who aren't there yet with your math, you youngins, um, quadruplets that are all identical in every way. Does that mean all four boys or all four are girls? Identical. Wow. That is fascinating. Kira wants to know what are their predators? So their predators are going to vary um, depending on which country we're talking about, um, but definitely big cats are going to be a big predator for armadillos and unfortunately humans are um, a real big pain for armadillos as well and they cause armadillos a lot of problems and um, hunting armadillos isn't that uncommon especially because like Sarah mentioned they do cause a problem for farmers and things um, so sometimes people aren't happy about that and they they might shoot the armadillos so we just wanted to remind everyone how thankful we are for all of this support the zoo has received um, if it's still within your capacity, there's a donate button right below us here. Please click on it, donate any amount, any amount helps. Dilbert needs more mealworms. <laughs> Help us get Dilbert some more mealworms. <laughs> uh, they're pretty, they're pretty inexpensive, so a lot, a little goes a long way. Uh, but we do have one last activity talk about for you guys to do at home, which would be super awesome if you're able to do this. Um, if you go to the zoo's website or <laughs> below <laughs> on the uh, Facebook Live, you'll see a link to the activity, which is to make your own armadillo tongue. So as we've been talking about, they have these long, long, sticky tongues they use to slurp up all the bugs. So if you go home, if you go and find a long straw, hopefully a reusable one, or any kind of long um, item. You can even make one out of paper. You can make one out of paper. And then wrap some <laughs> tape around it and try, <laughs> and try to uh, pick up little paper bugs. You guys will know just what it's like to be an armadillo. And shout out to Grandma and Grandpa. I love you both.